Bitcoin is still showing considerable strength despite the large rally in price action over the last week. Will Bitcoin continue upward on the short term? How are the macro charts developing? And what would our speculative targets be for Bitcoin's all-time high? Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. Today's video is going to be a very interesting one as we'll be diving into some very different analytical techniques discussing the potential top for Bitcoin's next cycle. We'll be going over the macro charts from a technical and a structural perspective, not only discussing possible targets, but how the price action is currently developing and what you should be watching out for. And we're finishing up on the short term price action discussing what is happening currently and where we could be expecting Bitcoin to move to next. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that con button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical and the structural information. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in joining our VIP group, we post trading setups with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, exclusive analysis, and so, so much more. We are absolutely printing in this channel this month. It has been fantastic. If you're interested in joining that and getting access to our group chat, so you can see over here, we have multiple group chats. You can contact us in the pinned comment of the free channel for more information or click this link to watch a video on what the VIP is actually about. So let's go ahead, guys and dive on in. And like we said, in today's video, we are doing not only some speculative analysis discussing potential top targets of Bitcoin, but we'll be going over the objective analysis we usually do. So a quick summary of what we're discussing. We're going to be discussing the short-term price action, what is happening with this current consolidation of the weekend, what we expect Bitcoin to go to, uh, to do next, and the possible price targets and levels you should be watching. We'll also be discussing the monthly chart in regards to the four-year cycle, and particularly the bull run phase of the four-year cycle. Is a four-year cycle broken? Where would we expect the price action to move to next in terms of uh, structural levels and what would the potential date of a top come in at and finally we'll be discussing the possible top price for bitcoin using a backtracking method which we'll be discussing later in today's video so let's go ahead and get stuck into it starting on that market data taking a look at 24 hour volume 24 hour volume is down 12 percent sitting at just under 150 billion again as we approach the weekend and as we move into the weekend it is very normal that volume starts to drop with that reduction in volume we have seen a small rise in liquidations again this is attributed not to the reduction in volume but more so the choppiness of the current price action in the short term, up 9.42% in the 24-hour period, $194 million in liquidations. Of the $194 million, we can see $91 million coming from longs and $102 million coming from short positions. This is indicative of indecision, indicative of of reduced volatility and indicative of compression. If we do look at the price section over here, we can see within that last 24 hour period, if we go ahead and bring up a date over here, we can see the 24 hour period, we have seen pretty much no price action for Bitcoin. You can see right over here, if we look at the actual percentage movement within that range, the highest and lowest movement we saw was around 1.12%. So we are seeing that consolidation pick up. And with that consolidation, we have seen old coins blast off, which is fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Moving over to the DXY, the DXY is doing what we would expect, which is again, we are starting to see that strength, uh, sorry, that strength fade away from the price action as we have broken down from that RSI trend line and the major two month long uptrend. We are still expecting a correction into this lower area of support to retest these local low points. And if only we lose that level, would we then expect a large correction for DXY? This would be very, very bullish for the markets if it does occur. Again, we are in a short-term downtrend as we have broken below this two-month long uptrend and it'd be very, very unlikely that we come up and retest these highs prior to retesting this area of support. Moving over to the broader markets, the S&P 500 is looking pretty strong over here, actually breaking that weekly candle back above 5,100. As we said in our prior video, if we do break that weekly above 5,100, that would 
initiate a continuation in price, looking 5,200, 5,300 as targets. Of course, if we fail to close that weekly above, we're going to be chopping between our 5,000, 5,100 range. If we do lose that 5,100, that would result in a short-term downtrend developing into our prior all-time high as support where we would very much likely bounce. However, that scenario of the correction scenario is very unlikely while we are remaining above 5,000 at the moment looking very strong for a continuation upwards. And the same goes for the Dow Jones over here again getting above that 39,000 trigger point on the weekly chart provided it can remain above this level. We are still looking for a target at that $40,000 level looking fantastic. Enough about that guys a quick word from Bicket and BingX and we'll jump into the video. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel Bitget and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen you're going to see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump over to Bitcoin. We'll start on the short term price action today and then building it up to the macro charts. So as we said just before, we really haven't seen all that much price action for Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. And although you're probably thinking, well, the price action is so boring, these are the times you really want to be paying attention to the price action to develop a potential plan so you can execute on whatever occurs next. So really quickly, we're gonna be taking a look at the price action. I really want you to zoom out and focus on the structural formation we've developed above the $60,000 level. So let's go ahead and identify our key support and resistance levels and then discuss the next likely move for Bitcoin. So straight away, guys, we have that $60,000 level as a psychological level and now a solid level of support. Of course, all the price action above the $60,000 level is going to be considered more bullish and below more bearish. Of course, that is a very obvious statement, right? So we are looking for, again, a continuation toward the upside, provided we remain above this $60,000 level. Now, that does mean a loss of this local low point would result in a short-term correction. We'll be discussing where that could take us in just a moment. But moving up from there, our next level of support is going to be our higher low level. This is going to be sitting at around 60,800. And this is a very key level of support as a loss of this support would indicate the short-term strength is starting to flip bearish and that could take us to retest 60 and of course if we retest 60 from a position of weakness the likelihood of a breakdown is significant so we are hoping that the price action is able to remain above this higher low while we consolidate in this sideways range before an eventual break toward the upside so let's discuss the break toward the upside currently bitcoin has been now chopping sideways for a couple days since the start of the month we have been in a short-term downtrend as represented presented by this downtrending diagonal trend line. We've now had three points of retest on this trend line and we do have that RSI trend line to validate that within this range of price action, which is going to be the cluster of price action we are observing over here, we have got slightly falling momentum. With that falling momentum, we do have rising price action. So we are forming, again, not only a structural pattern, which most of you would recognize, which is going to be, again, a symmetrical triangle 
formation or what we would call a pennant formation on a smaller time frame. But more importantly, we are seeing a degree of absorption. Now with the low volume environment of the weekend, it is very hard to see this absorption actually present on the chart. However, if we do look at the RSI, we can see with that RSI falling and the price action still rising on the short term, as reflected by this trend line, we do have absorption present. However, it is not yet strong enough that has flipped the price action towards the uptrend as we are still in a overall short term downtrend. So what are we really looking for guys? We are really looking for two things. We are looking for a break of this RSI trend line plus a break of this short term downtrend that would trigger the continuation upwards. Where would a continuation upwards take us? We are looking for our structural levels of resistance, primarily looking for this third, uh, this $63,000 level of resistance. Only above $63,000 would we expect then a strong continuation upwards. So if you had to imagine $63,000 akin to $60,000 resistance, this is going to be our, our, our resistance up over here, and this is going to be our support. These are two trigger points for continuations. A break below this level results in a continuation down. A break above this level results in a continuation upwards. And then we break it down even smaller. A loss of our higher low results in a continuation towards our support and a break above the short term downtrend results in a continuation toward our resistance. So then if we zoom into the price section, what is really happening, we are going to be chopping between this higher low and this downtrending diagonal resistance. So what are we looking for? Again, guys, if we see a double break, which is going to be the RSI flipping positive and the price action breaking above the trend line, we are expecting a continuation upwards to 63, a break over $63,000 and we actually expect a continuation to retest that prior all-time high around 68 to 69,000. That is really, really good stuff. On the flip side, guys, until we actually break below Again, or should I say, until we break above these levels, we are in a short-term downtrend and we do run the risk of a correction to retest that higher low at around 60,800. And of course, if we if we fail to bounce from this level, we would then be expecting a short-term correction. So the short-term correction could theoretically take us as low as around 57,000. Again, we are looking at the VIPV gap. So we can see a significant gap in the VIPV from around 68, which is going to be the higher low, to around 57,000, which again is going to be this cluster of consolidation that we had before that large move toward the upside. 57,000 is sitting underneath, okay? It is sitting underneath this monthly resistance range. If we do zoom out over here on the chart, we can take a look at this range of resistance. This is going to be that correction zone. We've actually broken through now on that higher time frame on that monthly chart, but we can see if we fail to remain above and we break back down to 57,000, that could mark this as deviation and could actually result in a correction even lower for Bitcoin. Now, the likelihood of this, in my opinion, is relatively low. However, if it does occur, this would actually still be bullish as the high time frame trend is still intact and we'd be expecting a continuation upwards in the future. So right now with the short term price action to summarize everything, it is very tricky to sit here and say exactly what is going to happen, particularly with the last 24 hours being so uneventful and the price action essentially not moving. What we are more or less watching now is the developing strength of price action and we're looking at the prior levels, okay, to define the overall strength. Loss of these high, uh, higher lows would indicate that the bears are taking control of the price action in the short term and could push the prices lower. Break down or break upwards from these downtrending resistances could result in again positive shifts in momentum which could facil uh, facilitate continuations higher. So again not too much happening on the price action in the short term. More or less a game of observation and a game of patience. Moving over to the macro charts guys. Let's go ahead and get into the crux of today's analysis and what most of you are probably watching for, which is going to be, you know, where could Bitcoin top out at and what date range are we expecting? So there's a few methods first and foremost we can use to project when Bitcoin will top in terms of the date. The first one is just simply going to be taking a look 
at how long we remained in a bull run phase in prior cycles. So we're taking a look at the point of which the monthly candle broke above the dotted trend line. The dotted trend line is the dead cap bounce high of the bear market. We can see we create an all time high, we correct, we create a yearly base of support, and the highest point we reach is going to be the dead cap bounce high, which marks the dotted trend line. We saw that in every single cycle, it has been consistent through every, uh, every single cycle. The dotted trend line is the bull run trigger point, as we have been talking to you guys and telling you guys for the last year. The bull run trigger point is, again, the point of which we close a monthly uh, candle above the dotted trend line as the trend angle significantly steepens from that moment towards the all-time high in comparison from the low to that dotted trend line. We can see already the trend angle significantly increases from around 30 to 50 to 60 percent once that dotted trend line is crossed, which is an indication of increased momentum, velocity, and strength over a large period of time. So, if we're looking at that specific phase, which is going to be that bull run phase, how long do these generally last? And if we apply the date to the current cycle, when would that indicate the top would begin? So, in prior cycles, we saw 14 months, okay from the monthly candle close above the dotted trend line to the all-time high. And the last cycle we saw was 13 months from the dotted trend line break on the monthly to the all-time high. So we have around 13 to 14 or 14 to 13 months from again the current date, which will take us to March, April, 2025. This is assuming we see a cycle in terms of the bull run equally as long as what we have seen in the past. This is going to be our first projection. 13 to 14 months, which takes us to March, April, 2025. The next one is going to be based on our prior date range trend, uh, date range trend from the absolute bottoms to the absolute tops. Now I would say this one is going to be slightly less accurate in my opinion, because we have seen a earlier initiation in the bull run. But what we have seen in this instance is from the bottom to the top, we see 1,064 days, from the bottom to the top, we see 1,064 days. Applying that date range to the current cycle from the bottom to the perceived top would take us to October 6, 2025. So the current date range trend would be October 6, okay, 2025. That would be based on our date range trend. If we look at, again, the length of the average bull run phase, that would take us to March, April, 2025. I would say the March, April, 2025 is more likely to be accurate than the October 6, 2025, primarily as if we're looking at the length of which we remain in these bull run phases, that is going to be more specific than the entire four year phase itself. Really quickly guys, provided we we make an all time high within this green phase and we make a all time low or a, a, a low point within the red phase, the four year cycle is still valid. So let's take this data now and extrapolate it further. Let's talk about where the top could be. And I would like to mention one thing before we discuss this. This is a very, very speculative analysis. This is not how I'm going to be projecting the top. This is simply an analysis right now on some data that could indicate the ballpark range of where a top could be. As I have mentioned before, if you are going to be trading and looking to exit the top, you need to be using leading data to project where the top is going to be based on the actions of current buyers and sellers. And we explained how you could do that in one of our prior videos. So this, what we're going to go through is simply hypothetical. It is simply an analysis, something to munch around in your brain on and to think about. So a lot of people are asking where the Bitcoin top is going to be. And they're using the Bitcoin chart to come to their answer. We're going to do something different because that is how I like to roll. I like to do things different. I like to think outside the box. I like to take a different approach and a different angle on viewing things. We're going to utilize that same 13 to 14 month period as our cornerstone for where we'd expect the date to be for the top. Because as we know, the price action moves in an overall uptrend, and therefore, the later the date, the higher the perceived top. The earlier the date, the lower the perceived top. That is generally how things work in an overall uptrend. So 13 to 14 months. What we are going to be doing, we are going to be looking at 
Bitcoin dominance. And we are going to be looking actually at the total altcoin market cap, deriving a projective top point for the total altcoin market cap, applying the percentage breakdown on the Bitcoin dominance chart, and then calculating where Bitcoin would be relative to that in a specific frame of time. So let's go ahead and explain it. As we see in the Bitcoin dominance type chart, what we generally see is at the top of Bitcoin cycle, Bitcoin ends up around that 40% mark. So we're going to assume at the top of the cycle, whenever Bitcoin reaches this top, whether it be in 13 to 14 months or at the end of 2025 or even sooner, we're going to assume Bitcoin dominance is going to be around 40%. With that assumption, we can take a projection of the 13 to 14 months from the monthly candle to a specific date point, which takes us to again that April 2025 period. If we look at the total two market cap, which again is altcoins and Ethereum excluding Bitcoin, okay, which is important, that would take us to a total market cap of around 5.5 trillion-ish. Here's a very interesting thing, guys. If we take 5.5 trillion, okay, and we find, well, what percent of 60%, what, sorry, what total number, if we find 60% of it is 5.5 trillion, that is going to come to a 9.1 trillion market cap. So what do we do then next? We take 9.1 trillion, okay? We minus 5.5 trillion, which is going to be the collective total market cap of altcoins and Ethereum, that leaves us with 3.6 trillion remaining. So we look at the total of our Bitcoin market cap currently, it is going to be 1.2 trillion. So we know 3.6 divided by 1.2 equals 3. So that is going to be the multiplication of where we expect the price action to top at if we were to see, again, the trend continue towards that perceived top trend line as per the Ethereum market cap, or should I say the total two market cap, which is going to be that perceived top point over here, okay, at 5.5 trillion. If we were to reach a total two market cap of 5.5 trillion at a Bitcoin dominance percentage of 40%, that should result in a total price of Bitcoin in terms of 3.6 uh, trillion market cap. So 3.6 trillion market cap is three times the current market price. So we plug in the market price at $61,881 multiplied by three. That would take us to a price point of 185,000 for Bitcoin at a date of, okay, at a date of uh, April 2025. That would be the projected top for Bitcoin if we were to follow the 13 to 14 month uh, phase, if we were to see Bitcoin dominance hit 40%, which we generally usually do, and if we see the total true market cap retest that perceived trend line. If we look at the total three market cap, we can see again that perceived trend line is going to be active on this chart as well. How do we come to that perceived trend line? Again, we assume we have a rounding bottom formation, okay? If we take a measured move from the base of the rounding bottom formation to the top and apply that to the breakout point, you can see we eventually come up to retest that trend line. So there's a structural formation that we have on the chart, which is validating a high time frame trend line of resistance. Again, we have that confirmation on the RSI as well, expecting a break of this level to result in that move. And then we apply that perceived total amount with the Bitcoin dominance percentage, and then factoring the multiplication number with the total price of Bitcoin right now, based on the date range trend to give us a perceived price. So this perceived price or this estimated price of 185,000 would be the absolute highest point we would expect Bitcoin to go within the next cycle. Now, like we said, this is entirely speculative. There are many factors which influence the asset prices over a macro period. This could all be complete hogwash. We could find out it's all completely false. And that is fine because I'm not sitting here saying this is going to be how it's going to work out. This is not how I'm going to be selling. I'm not looking for a price tag of 185,000. It is just a analytical uh, bit of information, something to mull over, something to think about, and very interesting when you look at it from a different perspective. Again, guys, when we look at what drives asset prices on a macro uh, perspective, we have to look at things that shift overall systematic risk. 
Systematic risk are elements of risk that are uncontrollable by the individual investor. And these are really what drive markets in specific directions. If we take a look at the current Bitcoin's price action, if we look at what happened over here, we saw interest rates plateau. And as we started to move upwards, we had the information that we were expecting interest rates to potentially start to pivot or start to uh, drop back down. And that is what kind of reduced the overall systematic risk in the market and facilitated a continuation toward the upside, factored in with the ETF. But if we do look at that chart again, we can see not only do we have, you know, interest rates as a driver of macro price action, we've got taxation policy, okay, we've got economic policy, okay, and most importantly, we have stuff like societal perspective. And this is where ETFs come in massively that has pushed Bitcoin's price upwards. So all of these aspects, if they sum to a collective net sum positive, okay, we generally see the overall price action move upwards on a macro. If they sum to a net sum negative, we generally start to see the price action correcting or reversing on the macro. So when we're looking at the overall prediction for Bitcoin and macro chart, we are considering much more than price action, much more than technical, we are considering economic perspective and governmental perspective, societal perspective, monetary policies ECT. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you found it informative. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.